My name is Martin Harp. This is my 97A4 V8T swapped. This is my 2000 S4 with a V10. So this engine is from a 2014 Audi S7. Currently made it to a manual transmission and I retained Quattro in this car. I did not buy a donor car. I, I picked up this engine off of eBay. It was just a straight dropout. That kind of started from needing something a little crazier than the V10. I've done multiple 4.2 swaps in the past. Keep me, myself entertained. I work on cars for a living, so got to kind of keep yourself entertained or you get bored with it. I did the 4.2 swaps and then I thought, why not a 5.2? I think a lot of stuff that I did with this car helped me to know what to do with the 4.0. So this car is actually one of my very first B5s going back all the way to 2012. So I wanted just a really clean, simple 4.2 build. Everything powder coated, every coolant pipe, everything. I mean, I just made this 4.2 immaculate. I saw the VR6 swaps start to come out and I thought that was really cool because not only did it look cool, they sound great. So that's when I started, I sold off the 4.2 stuff and I started on the VR6 swap. I don't know, two or three years, it, it felt like forever. This car was constantly being developed for the VR6 swap, but just constantly waiting on parts and just things that were out of my control uh, just got to me and I just had to do something something different with it. I saw this V10 on Facebook Marketplace for 1800 bucks with the engine harness, the transmission still attached, and uh, I believe the ECUs were there as well. And I just had to get it. Had this sitting in the engine bay uh, the very next day. I had it bolted to an O1E and sitting in the engine bay. And at the time it was only bolted with a couple bolts, but just to get a feel for where it would sit, how well it would fit. And that was all done in my garage. So I'm not just a shop queen. I don't just perfect on a lift with all the fancy tools and stuff. It was all just done on my garage on my knees. Uh, I took a hammer to certain parts of the firewall and that's about all it took for that. Uh, but I do have like custom engine mounts and transmission mounts to push the transmission back a couple inches and a shorter drive shaft and things like that. I, I don't consider myself a fabricator, but I like to design things and I like to engineer things and I can weld enough. I say if you want to do something like this, you should definitely just try it because it's just a fun feeling. Like you get satisfaction from trying something and it just working out. And I think you'd be surprised with Audi being basically Legos when it comes to certain generations. Obviously you get a little more technical when you're trying to stuff a newer MLB engine into a B5, but say like the VR6 or anything that sticks with that generation, you're definitely gonna be surprised by the amount of things that will just work. It wasn't so important that I keep Quattro on this car. Uh, because I kind of knew that I just wanted to have fun with this car. We got the engine in there, got the axles in, uh, but having to push the engine back so far, 65 millimeters, front axle angle is pretty crazy. The outer CV joint popped out. I just took the front axles out completely, went rear wheel drive. That was a lot of fun for a while, but I got sick of doing one wheel peels. I did get in touch with a company that was making uh, like diff locker type of things for the B5 and uh, I just never got around to installing it. So anyway, I decided to look into getting it back to Quattro and not having axle issues. You know, the all road O1E was designed, you know, for, for the all road being higher up and stuff. So anyway, I decided to give it a shot. So I got a hold of a set of O1E all road axle flanges, bolted it in and I haven't had an axle pop since. So this one's running the Verkline subframes in the front and rear as well, just like the 4OT. Pretty much everything 034 makes as far as suspension. Yeah, I just wanted to kind of refresh the car that I had purchased so long ago and just try to keep it on the road. I'm using the same radiator on both cars, and that's just a DIY kit from a company called Northern Radiator. They sell just the, the radiator core with intakes attached that don't have any connections on them. I got some quick connect fittings made from another guy in the community and had those welded on where I needed them to be. A V10 is running B6 and 7 
S4, basically the whole coolant system from a B6 S4. Straight piped, so it's very loud. It being straight piped, it's a uh, custom exhaust all the way back. Each bank has its own three inch pipe from the engine all the way to the tailpipes. I, I did retain the factory hood latch, so the V10 doesn't have hood uh, pins either, but this, this is removable for a reason because I cannot shut the, the hood <laughs> with this on. Um, so I just pop it on there for car shows. I call it the flex plate. Yeah, just don't forget to take it off when you close the hood. <laughs> right, yeah, filters are, like touching the headlights and stuff. Um, but you know, you'll have that. As soon as I purchased the wide body and started on that 4OT swap, I kind of put this car to the back and just like drove it instead of like working on it and refining this more. Um, so there's still a long list of things I want to do for this. There's uh, like, I'd like to mount the MAF, like just a bracket with a plate so it blocks off that hot air, maintain the reliability like i don't want this thing getting too hot which you know stop and go traffic it definitely does get a little warm you get compliments like oh my god this car is perfect but i know all the flaws <laughs> and and they stick out like a sore thumb to me and so i'm so glad that some people are blind to it the s8 version is rated at 450 horsepower to the crank so and you definitely feel that when you're in the b5 and you have it instantly at your disposal <laughs> A lot of people, you know, when you're driving up on them, they have to look back and see what's coming up because you just don't, you don't expect it from this car. Uh, to do the swap, I would start with a C6S6 harness because you just need throttle, pedal, wiring, uh, CAN bus if you really want like RPM and stuff to work, and power and ground, and you've got a, a running V10. And then the classiness of the interior, having technology but not being too advanced, yeah, it just, it's a good middle ground of like luxury and style and performance that I think still holds up. Uh, obviously, I may have ruined that with <laughs> what I'm doing here, but that's why I, I pretty much consider this the, the beauty and the beast. Yep, I did take the weights into consideration. Uh, for the, the V10 car, I knew it was gonna be nose heavy, uh, but it really isn't that bad. Where this car shines is with the Verkline subframes in the front and rear, relocating the battery to the back. So uh, this car weighs in at 3,440 pounds. This one was not so much a focus on being lightweight, but still with the Verkline subframes and stuff, I think that helps. This one weighs in right at 3,605. So I knew I was gonna need something crazier than the V10 after that whole debacle. <laughs> so with the 4OT, I definitely wanted something a little more tame. So this was running the B5 RS4 Miltec cat back, resonated cat back with two mufflers. And it's very tame for a 4.0. Uh, it's probably the quietest 4.0 you'll, you'll hear. <laughs> At the time, I had a buddy who has a uh, D4 S8, uh, and he was running the TS1 turbos, and one one pull in that car, and I knew that I needed a 4OT, but I didn't want the D4 S8 price tag, so I wanted to spend way more to put it into a B5. <laughs> you know, the B6 and 7 S4s came with the 4.2, and this thing is basically the size of that 4.2. I purchased it already converted, it's a 97A4 sedan, and the guy that previously owned it, it was his personal car. He owned a body shop and decided to convert it to wide body um, and just got to a point where he needed to expand his business and thought uh, I'd be the guy to make an offer on it. So the fuel pump was all froze up, put a new fuel pump in it and then found out an injector was bad. Injector fixed and sold the engine and transmission 
to a guy who needed it more than I did. Uh, the most driving I've done on this car so far has been here in Helen, Georgia for Alpine Volksfair. I've probably got less than two miles at, back on it back home. I've probably warmed it up five or six times completely before even, even putting it on the trailer to, to bring it here. Uh, the reactions have been crazy. How did you do it? <laughs> I mean, that's a big question to answer, hence the video. Completely stripped the bottom end of it, uh, cleaned everything up, painted it, and everything that went back on the car was either new or, or like new condition, just to kind of just a basic restoration. Yeah, the headlights are brand new. The bumper and fog grills and fog lights are all brand new. Core support, of course, fans, radiator, all that stuff's brand new. Hood struts, brand new. RS4 grills, brand new. The hood latch is brand new. The hood latch cable is brand new. Front and rear windshields are brand new from the dealer. Rear quarter glass is brand new and I had to get that from Audi Tradition, which if you're watching anyone from Audi Tradition, please ship to the US and not make it so difficult for us. <laughs> yep, so inside I've got a Gallardo Superleggera uh, steering wheel. It's the Alcantara wrapped steering wheel. They just uh, S4 cluster for now, but I do plan to do custom gauge faces and stuff like I've got in the V10. Oh yeah, and the, the BT Res screen, that's been getting a lot of attention. That exclusively works with the DS1 to show uh, real-time variables from the, the factory ECU. You can flash, you can log. It's just crazy what that thing could do. It's all touch screen. So it's pretty cool to integrate that into the B5. I originally wanted to keep it pretty much uh, stock interior as stock looking. I didn't want screens or anything inside. The BT Res is a necessary evil in my opinion, but it's one that's been getting a lot of attention. But as far as like fitting it into the car without saying too much, it's the engine will bolt into the B5 with OEM parts. Starter was a little difficult. Um, that was, that's a 4OT starter, but I did have to notch the transmission a little bit so that it would actually come together right. So on this one, I'm running the OA3. If you want to make your own mounts to mount the OA3 into a B5, because it just doesn't directly mount in. I'm using an automatic B5 S4 or A4 drive shaft because those are three inches shorter. And because I pushed the transmission back slightly, maybe 20 millimeters, 15, 20 millimeters, I'm using a small spacer to make up for that. As far as front axles, I'm just using stock B6 and 7 S4 front axles. The fan assembly is all custom and it's mostly out of necessity. Two 10 inch fans on top there and the bracket is custom made. I just drew that up and had send, cut, send, cut that out. Basically one of the last pieces I bolt onto, bolted onto the car before I came here to uh, Helen. So The engine's pretty much a stock S7 dropout from a 2014 S7. It still has the stock turbos, but it is running the Autotech fuel pump upgrades and a flex fuel sensor. So I can run E85 in this and it uh, adjusts in real time. Engine's basically stock other than that. Here at Helen, I've done the most driving on this car that I've done yet since it's been running. Unfortunately, every time I do a pull, I've got some scraping issues in the back that I'd like to address, so I, I don't try to get into boost too much, but when I do, it squats pretty hard, so I know it's it's gonna be a fun one when, once we iron out all the all the kinks. So it was, it was a lot of trimming, currently just for the show, and I've been removing these uh, just so people can see all the, the work that's done and everything, but um, this is just a factory Volkswagen VR5 Passat part to cover up this area, the ABS. I would try things and they would just work. This is currently unfinished, of course. Um, I would like to integrate something that makes this look a little more OEM. I might even do uh, powder coat this all black or... In the end, I want this to, to be OEM plus. That's the whole goal. So this is just a B5 cover, just trimmed slightly so it sits on here nicely. I'll uh, 3D scan this and I'll have these go straight into here. This will suck in cold air instead of hot engine air. You know, you got race car stuff here with like riveted on fans and stuff. Um, but there's a little bit of give and take when you do something like this. Obviously, it's not going to look 100% OEM. Keeping the factory hood latch. I didn't want to close the hood and have hood pins and all that. And I'm not knocking anyone that does that. It is. It can be a cool look, but it's just not what I wanted for this car being, you know, the refined uh, exhaust and just classy, classy lines. You know, I build cars for me and if other people appreciate them, then that's great. It's able to not only showcase uh, what I can do in case somebody wants me to do something like this for them, which I highly recommend you just try it yourself. <laughs> Perfect your craft 
and try to make everything look nice. Um, you'll just only keep getting better at that. Being that this basically has the same dimensions as the 4.2, unlike the 5.2, I didn't have to push this engine back very far. So it was pretty easy to retain Quattro on this car. Retaining manual transmission was just as important as keeping it Quattro for me. I just kept bolting things on and it just kept working. So I just kept doing it, yeah. you know, until it is because what you see. Driving around in this car, the only light on the dash is the airbag light. I've got the Gallardo steering wheel, which has a dual stage airbag, and I have not currently wired that in yet. So please, nobody hit me. I, I stuck with the B5 ABS system. It's pretty much a standalone ABS system. There's, it doesn't look for any signals anywhere else. It's just all self-contained. Being a tech and working on these cars, um, I know, you know what a gateway module is and everything, and I have access to wiring diagrams and things like that. And just having done relatively simpler CAN bus stuff with the V10, um, sending RPM and stuff to the, to the dash and coding the cluster correctly for that, it was, it's basically the same thing with this, but the V10 is actually the same generation CAN bus. The, on the V10, if I've got any kind of codes, check engine light lights up, things like RPM and all that is, is, are displayed correctly. Arduino is a programmable tiny computer. You can do all sorts of things with it, build tiny robots, robots and stuff. What I'm using it for is to basically sniff the CAN bus. So I'll plug in an Arduino sniffer into like a, an S7 that is actually a, a full car. So it's spitting out all the messages that I want. And then I just log those and I figure out what messages are what. Running a 1.8T ECU just to pick up the crank sensor off of the bell housing, just to get RPM on the dash because I cannot directly get that from the 40T ECU into the dash. You know, the Mark IV uses the same CAN bus uh, messages as the B5. So any of those would be the same thing that the B5 wants to see, uh, same as the Mark IV. Hours of wiring in this car, if we count staring at wiring diagrams and trying to document every change I make, I don't even know, it's hundreds and hundreds. <laughs> yes, very easily. And uh, those diagrams and uh, schematics, any spreadsheets I make will be for sale. So. <laughs> People have commented on the, the uh, attention to detail and it's been amazing to, to just hear from people that not only have like followed me and, and know that attention to detail, but new people that are new to these builds and get to see them for the first time, that attention to detail is not there on some other things and it is here. It's been amazing to like just get that feedback and that validation for all the hours that I've spent doing this, you know. And you, you have to be willing to learn. Uh, you have to be willing to put in the hours of reading through parts diagrams, wiring diagrams, Maybe if you don't know how to read diagrams, learning that as well. So it's, a, it's definitely a learning process. It's not something you just jump into, but you have to take that leap to get there, so.